I've only had this for a few days now, and I didn't make a prototype for it first, so I haven't really worked out the most elegant possible solutions for it. But I have found one reasonably reliable method, so this video will detail my favorite way to assemble it that I've found so far. If you haven't seen the build video, I would recommend watching that first. This is a bit of a spoiler if you would ever consider making one of these, because it was pretty gratifying, at least for me, to work out how to solve it. First, a bit about what this is. Aside from the obvious assessment that it looks very much like a soccer ball, this is a truncated icosahedron. And let me explain what truncation means. This is a normal icosahedron. It has 20 faces, and each of these triangular faces correspond with one of these hexagons on the truncated version. It's a little bit difficult to see at first, but once you get it, it should click. Now this is what truncation is. Imagine that you were to sand these tips off, these vertices on the icosahedron. It would make a flat spot, and that flat spot would have five sides. And that's what the pentagons are. The first time that you put this together, it may feel a bit like you're diffusing a bomb, because all the pieces are going to be spring-loaded, and trudging through this by trial and error is messy, so I wanted to be systematic. My best attempt at this is the snowflake method that I'm going to show you. Two identical arrangements like this are made, and then it can just be assembled in two halves. By the way, this isn't really shaped like an actual snowflake, because those have six-fold radial symmetry. And our pentaflake has only five axes of symmetry. There's only five ways that you could fold it in half and have it still be the same on both sides. The arrangement is pretty self-explanatory at first, until you get to the five connections that span from pentagon to pentagon. Those are a bit confusing. You have to skip one and go to the next each time. It kind of reminds me of drawing a star. At this point forward, the assembly may appear to get a little bit messy or confusing, but it's really not. You just connect each pentagon from one snowflake to each hexagon on the other. There's a one-to-one -one correspondence between the petals on each half. You just kind of have to keep your eye on the prize, and it'll be okay if a piece pops off here or there somewhere during the process.
once all of the existing rubber bands are snapped into place onto their pentagons, we still have ten remaining to add to it. And these ones really help to solidify the structure. The finished shape is under a considerable amount of compressive force, but the interior angles on each of the pieces allow them to fit in such a way that wedges them up against one another. And this helps to distribute these forces. I guess it's similar to the way that a round arch works. So it has a surprising strength for a sphere that's only held together by 30 rubber bands. But I still wouldn't recommend trying the following strength test unless you really don't mind losing a few pieces. I hope you found this interesting, and I'll see you next time.